Let me show you how we can recreate the commonly used polarization effect using Lightroom. If you want to follow along this tutorial, make sure to download the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So this right here is our raw file. And before we can start working on the sky, we want to get the base exposure right. So let's open up the basic panel and I want to start this by changing the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard to lessen the contrast. And this just means I do have more control over the contrast myself. Then right away, let's also work on the white balance. You can see this shot is a little bit too cold, so we can fix that by bringing up the temperature a notch, just giving the whole shot a little more warmth this way. But that's about it. Now for the exposure, looking at this program, you can see it's pretty well exposed without over or under exposure. Still, I want to make the shot a little brighter by bringing up the exposure. I'm also going to bring up the whites quite a bit because I want to give this image punch and increasing the whites just helps pushing the histogram more in a brighter direction. At the same time, I want to bring down the highlights all the way and this already will help with that polarization effect which we want to emulate. So as I bring down the highlights, what this does is you can see we make these clouds in the sky a little more visible this way. Then let's make this shot a little sharper by bringing up the texture just a little bit. And at the same time, I want to bring down the dehaze just a small amount like this because I just think negative dehaze looks pretty good on this scene. I also want to bring up the vibrance like this just to make the colors pop some more. And here we have the base image already. We can take a look at before real quick. You can see we do have much less contrast than before, but that's exactly what we wanted because we want to have more control over the contrast ourselves. Another obvious thing is the adjusted white balance. It looks much warmer, which you can clearly see at that hilltop where the light is hitting the grass with that nice, beautiful golden hour light. Let's work on the polarization effect. And since we are targeting very specific areas of an image to do that, of course, we're going to use masking. So let's open up the masking panel. Of course, usually, the polarization effect is achieved by attaching a polarization lens filter and rotating this filter on your camera lens. But sometimes you want to push that effect further with a bit of editing in order to get more contrast. And especially images like this work really, really great since we have a nice big part of blue sky with white puffy clouds in front of that. In order to add contrast, we are targeting the blue sky. Therefore, we are going to use a color range mask. I'm going to click right in here and right away you can see we are creating a pretty good selection. We can spot a very fine line around the trees right here, which is a problem, but we can try to fix that. I would try to bring up the refine slider and see if we can get rid of that line. Apparently this is not working perfectly, however. So what I want to do instead is I want to say subtract and let's choose a radial gradient. And I'm going to roughly kind of deselect the area around the trees right here. We don't need to apply this polarization effect on the whole sky. So subtracting an area like that is totally fine. To make this a little more natural, I'm also going to subtract a linear gradient just like this. So we don't have a bright spot in the middle of the sky afterwards. All right, now since we have adjusted the color range refined slider right here. This means we are also targeting some clouds up here, which we don't want. So again, let's say subtract one more time and choose a color range mask. And with that color range mask, I'm clicking right in the gray part of that cloud right here. And just like that, we have the perfect selection for the blue part of the sky. Now, all that's left to do to create a polarization effect is to make this part darker. How can we do that? Simply by bringing down the exposure. I'm only going to drop it a little bit here. We can also bring down the blacks for more contrast. The difference is exposure will target everything while the blacks slider will only target the darkest parts. So I think this is looking pretty good. I can deactivate this mask for a moment so you can see the difference from before to after. And immediately you can see a lot more contrast in the sky. Now what I like to do to make this effect look more awesome is I like to stack 
multiple of these color range masks on top. So I'm going to create a new one. And again, I'm targeting the blues of the sky. This time I'm not adjusting the refine slider, but I want to subtract a linear gradient one more time. And this time I'm going to subtract a way bigger area. So only really the top part is affected here, just like this. And with this color range mask setup, I'm going to drop the exposure a lot. So something like this looks great. I also want to bring down the blacks just a little bit. And there we have it. This is looking really, really good, almost like a natural polarization effect. And again, let me deactivate this mask to see the difference from before to after. And because we have stacked these two color range masks on top of each other, we get a way more natural gradient from the bright part of the sky at the bottom to the dark part at the very top. Of course, you can repeat this step a few more times if you want. I think this is looking pretty solid so far. What I want to do, however, is I want to use a simple linear gradient covering quite a big chunk of the sky like this. And I simply want to further bring up the contrast and this just helps to make the clouds pop a little more. I also want to push the clarity in here because this makes the clouds look even more awesome. Wonderful. And that's pretty much it for the polarization effect tutorial. So let me deactivate all the masks once more to see the difference from before to after. Wonderful. A lot more contrast, a lot more punch. Makes this whole thing look way more interesting. Now we can continue working our way through the image. What I want to do as well in here is to kind of shape the light a little more. I want to make the shadows in the foreground darker and I want to make that light hitting that hill brighter. So let me create another linear gradient with which I want to target the shadows. Just like this. And in here I'm going to simply bring down the exposure making the shadows darker this way. I'm going to drop them quite a bit, almost underexposing this area because I want this part to be really, really dark and thus make the hilltop stand out. That's all there is to do for the shadows. Now selecting the hilltop might be a little trickier. I'm going to try this using a color range mask and I'm clicking right in here. This is already looking like a pretty good selection. Uh, what I need to do, however, is I want to not target the trees on top. So I'm going to say subtract and let's try the objects mask right here. Just make sure to use the rectangle select mode. And with that active, I'm going to draw a rectangle around all these trees. And just like that, we have removed them from our selection. We want to subtract a linear gradient to not target anything in the shadows in the foreground and maybe make this edge between highlights and shadows a little softer as well. Okay, and then let's add a brush mask with which I want to target areas I might have not gotten with the color range mask before. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to simply bring up the exposure, making this part brighter. And again, I'm raising it quite a bit. I'm trying to tickle out as much brightness as I can without overexposing. So this is looking really, really good. And then I also want to work on the trees on top of the tail. Here I'm going to use the objects mask one more time. Again, with the rectangle select active and I'm just going to draw a rectangle around those trees. And what I want to do in here is to also make them slightly brighter. And maybe we could add some whites and bring up the saturation just to give them some more color. All right, and that's it for the masking part. Again, let me turn off all the masks and that's our base image after some basic raw adjustments. And here we have the image with the masking applied and this awesome looking polarization effect. That looks so much cooler, but now let's do some color grading. And there's not much going on, but still, we want to do that. Let's open up the color mixer. I do think I want to work on the saturation a little more, so I'm going to bring up the orange tones, the yellow tones, and let's also bring up the green tones. These are mostly the color tones that are in the landscape in the foreground, and that's the reason I want to push them. I don't want to push the blue tones because those are kind of overwhelming already, so let's not do that. What I want to do, however, is to head into the luminance tab, 
Here we can add a little more contrast to the sky by bringing down the blue luminance. I think this is looking great. We can also work on the landscape since we can target the greens and the yellows. So let's bring up the, the yellow luminance, making that hilltop a little brighter. And I'm also going to raise green. That's looking beautiful. That's also almost it for the color grading. I do want to head into the calibration tab real quick. I want to bring down the green primary hue just because I think it looks good. And maybe let's raise the blue saturation. Wonderful. Then let's sharpen this image real quick in the details tab. We're going to bring down the radius, increase the details all the way. Then let's hold down the Alt key and apply some masking. We only really want the subject in the center to be sharpened like this. And let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Wonderful. That's it for editing this image in Lightroom. Now I do want to clean up this image. Mainly I want to get rid of these trees in the back because they are super distracting and I'm going to do this in Photoshop. So I'm going to right click on the image, go to edit in and choose edit in Photoshop. And here let's zoom in. I'm going to use the lasso tool and I'm going to make a very rough selection around the trees. Once I selected one of the trees, I'm going to hit the generative fill and hit generate. This should nicely get rid of that distracting object. Just like this, I'm going to work my way through the image. I'm going to select another tree right here and hit generative fill and hit generate. All right, and one last time with the big tree. Let's see if Photoshop can handle this. That looks perfect. All right, and here we have the finished image cleaned up and ready to go. So let me know what you think about this technique. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments as well. And thank you so much for watching this video.